Carlos, you guys are targeting, generally speaking, 40 percent cost cuts in order to make EVs profitable around the world. And there are some places where in Europe you're successful with EVs, but overall you're going to have to bring those cost cuts down substantially. How quickly can you make that happen? 40 percent is a, a very high target. Well, 40 percent is just uh, the uh, evaluation of the additional cost of an electric vehicle against an internal combustion engine vehicle. That is what, uh, what the experts are calculating, is 40% cost up. And we know that the middle classes want to buy BVs at the price of ICEs. So we need to bring down the cost of uh, electric vehicles to the same amount as the cost of an internal combustion engine vehicle. I wasn't really sure if I was going to um, opine on this uh, recently developed story about Stellantis. Now, as a shareholder, I will definitely be joining in with the class action lawsuits of shareholders against Stellantis because I recognize that Stellantis has done a lot of stupid things, which has basically ruined the brand from the inside out. But here's the thing. The latest thing that they've done is supposedly they've been rejecting offers to possibly buy the brand's Dodge and Chrysler specifically. As far as I know, Ram and Jeep either make enough money or are potentially enough uh, money makers that you would never consider selling those. The problem with Chrysler is Chrysler was basically gutted by um, just, I, I guess the best word is apathy or negligence. Uh, they showed, what was it, the Chrysler Airflow concept a few years ago. I went to New York International Auto Show a couple of years ago, and I saw that concept in person for the first time, and it didn't really look any more or less than your typical electric vehicle. It wasn't much better looking than a Polestar. It just felt like maybe it had a little bit more glass to it. But then I noticed that none of their electric vehicles had come out. For instance, we're still waiting for the Wagoneer S. We're still waiting to see the Dodge Charger EV. We're still waiting um, for any update whatsoever on what they called the Halcyon concept. So for the most part, it looks like they gave up on the airflow, which was a concept, by the way. It never actually entered production. And it in my opinion, I don't think that Halcyon concept's going to ever enter production either. Now, I'm not going to make this too long because basically the long and short of it is Stellantis has been approached by, I, I guess you could say, enthusiasts who want to buy Dodge and Chrysler from them. I personally have the belief that Stellantis is there to liquidate those brands and to basically kill them off. Uh, there was a number of brands, if you really think about it, that disappeared over time due to either lack of interest or the... Because first of all, one thing you got to remember, Chrysler and Dodge have been passed around like a cheap hooker for a while. I remember back in 2008 during the bailout era, um, before they actually went bankrupt, how they were forced to slash models out of their portfolio. Now, they stupidly chose to slash the Dodge Magnum rather than ever giving it a proper facelift like they did with the rest of the vehicles. Because if you remember, back then, the Pentastar V6 and the 8-speed combination didn't exist back then. It wasn't until much later where you got the um, Pentastar V6 and the 8-speed pretty much added to all of their vehicles. And that, for the most part, actually made most of their vehicles competent but then after that you know the hemi engine got more powerful you got the hellcat engine you got the demon engine and so forth and so on and um the reality is they didn't keep the magnum around which they should have and it's weird because they got rid of the magnum right at the moment where these suvs were starting to get popular and that's that's the crazy thing about it the Magnum would have been a popular vehicle if they had treated it right, but they just didn't. And um, they would have had four cars. They would have had the 300, the Magnum, the Charger, and the Challenger. They would have had four cars. Plus, they would have had the Ram TRX. They would have had the Jeep Hellcat. 
and they would have had the Dodge Durango Hellcat. All of these cars sharing the exact same engines and the exact same transmissions. They just, for whatever reason, you know, uh, they what was it? They were purchased by Cerebus uh, LLC, and then after that, they were purchased by FCA, and then after that, they became Stellantis. They've been passed around like a cheap hooker. And the reality is, I gave up on them because I realized, first of all, I wasn't going to get what I wanted out of them. And then I realized that the technology and the future of these cars is moving towards the hybrid and the electrification. Uh, Tim Kaniska said it himself. He said, yeah, on a global platform, we can't compete. And you have a choice. You either have to evolve or you're going to go out of business. Tim Kaniska said that himself when he was unveiling a Dodge Charger uh, EV. So the bottom line is, I've been listening to all of these YouTubers. Everybody swears that they got the inside line. Everybody swears that they know what's happening uh, behind closed doors. They said BYD, Chinese auto suppliers, they said they were coming in to possibly buy Dodge and Chrysler. Now, I don't believe that that was going to happen. If it did happen, it would only be because BYD wants a stake in building electric vehicles. Because right now, the Chinese, regardless what's happening here in America, the Chinese are focused on an electric future. They pretty much own Southeast Asia and pretty much most of Asia when it comes to automobile manufacturing. Um, for these people who think that America is the end all, there's only 350 million Americans. They got 1.4 billion Indians over there. They got 1.46 or whatever it is, 1.45 billion Chinese. Then they've got all of Southeast Asia. They got the Philippines. I was just in Bali. I was just in Singapore. When you go down there, you see the Chinese influence. You see these automakers, uh, Wu Ling and BYD and all and Dong Feng. You see all of these things down there. You don't see any of that stuff over here. And as you know, you know, Trump promised that if any of those cars come over here, he's going to put massive tariffs on them. So it was logical that BYD would be looking to buy into an American company so that this way they could build vehicles and they wouldn't have to pay the tariffs because they'd be under an American company or something. So um, supposedly what happened was, um, uh, what was it? It says descendant Frank B. Rhodes. He decided that he wanted to buy the company. He wanted to buy Chrysler. He wanted to buy Dodge. And he wanted to buy Mopar from Stellantis. And they basically said no. Now, all of these YouTubers, all, uh, everybody got the inside line and all this bullshit. I've been saying it for the longest. SRT is dead. Stellantis owns whatever rights there is to that name, and they're not going to sell it. They're not going to give it up. SRT, as you know it, is dead. Uh, Mopar, as you know it, is dead. They may keep it around as a name, just slow, like, so when you have an electric charger, uh, you could buy your regenerative brakes from, you know, Mopar. They'll say Mopar on them. But the Mopar you know is gone. It's gone. SRT is gone. Mopar is gone. It appears that Chrysler is on its way out. And once they drop these electric vehicles and the markups take place and people don't buy them and they, you know, I don't even think these things are really going to sit on lots very long. I think that what ends up, probably going to happen is there'll be a few purchases of them maybe these youtubers it'll be just like the cyber truck there'll be a few initial purchases of these things but i think the average uh mopar buyer is going to refuse to buy these things but then there's other issues say some of these people are oh yeah well you know what i'll do i'll just buy a used hellcat instead or i'll just find a, a, a new hellcat or whatever and i'll buy that instead have you taken a look at the prices on these cars? These cars are a year old, two years old, and they're still demanding top dollar for these. I purchased my Hellcat for like, what was it? $76,000 on the sticker. $76,000. That was 2016 February. Now, they don't make, well, I get you could have it made however you want. You could have narrow or wide. But the thing about it is all of these damn cars, they're selling these things, any Hellcat engine, they're selling these things for $100,000. And that's insane. 
But what's more insane to me is that anybody would actually be stupid enough to pay that kind of money for a car like that that's old and played out at this point. Like, that, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like, first of all, this is not a classic car. These things are made of plastic. These cars are never going to command the same level of, of, how should I say, appreciation that something like, like say, a 69 Charger or a 60... Seven uh, Plymouth or something. Those cars were made of leather, wood, and metal. Those cars will. Those cars will last forever. Like those, the '69 Charges. Those cars are gonna be around forever. If there's a '69 Charger out here, that car will be here forever. Even if somebody drove that thing and wrecked it, they would. All they would do is they'd hammer that shit out, and you'd still have that car. It would still be here. With these new cars, these cars are computers and modules and plastic and fucking electronics. These cars aren't going to appreciate the exact same way. They're just not. So for these people to be conned into going and buying these things at these ridiculous, like $100,000, $110,000. You know, even the Ram truck. I remember when the Ram truck first hit the dealer lot's. And I was just looking at him, and the and the dealer would, you know, he would be like, oh yeah, if you want, I could sell you that truck for ninety thousand dollars. And when those things first hit the lots, and I was like, yeah, this is really nice, but I can't use something this size. I I'm in Manhattan driving, the Wall Street district. If you go down there, it's tight. Uh, Wherever you are, Queens, it's like those are not vehicles that you want to drive down there. The Durango, maybe. The Jeep, absolutely, yeah, you could get away with it. But even then, it's like you don't want to drive stuff like that in those areas because the, the streets damage them. People damn people steal parts off of them, for God's sakes. But uh, my thinking was it's like for those things to now be being sold at 110 and 115, 120, I'm like, why would anybody be stupid enough to buy this stuff? So anyway, this dude, yeah, my grandpappy's company, I'm going to buy it. It's like they said, no, you're not. As far as I'm concerned, a lot of people saw the movie Wall Street with Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen, but I don't think a lot of people understood exactly what they were watching. Uh, in this case, Stellantis is there to basically be Gordon Gecko. They are going to liquidate that fucking company. I could already see. I mean, you already look at what they've done. They've gutted them down to a single vehicle. And it's a freaking minivan. It's a nice minivan. It's so, I, you know, in fact, I was just over in Queens and uh, two of my neighbors, they both had Chrysler Pacifica minivans. It's a nice minivan. I've heard bad stories about, you know, it's, it's uh, what is it called? Uh, it's reliability. I've heard some bad stories about that. But it's a nice vehicle. I've, I've, I've driven it. I liked it. It's a nice minivan. The only way I'd ever buy one is if, you know, I had a bunch of kids and I do road trips all the time, you know. But the thing about it is they've, they've cut this company down to just one car. There are very few companies that can survive on just one car. Bugatti has just, well, they have a bunch of cars based on one car. For the most part, they have a bunch of trims based on a single car. I mean, you'd have to be an exotic manufacturer to survive on just one car. And, and not many companies could do that. Like Pagani, they got the Huayra and that's like it. <laughs> you know, like it, what they've done to Chrysler, the writing was on the wall. They didn't give a shit about that company. And furthermore, you also have to remember, Europeans hate American cars. Europeans hate the fact that Americans have the freedom, well, up until now, to drive the cars that we've had. These people, you got to remember, most of these European companies, these people are communists for the most part. And the ones who think they're not communists, half of them are socialists. The other half, a lot of these people are anarchists. But you got to understand, these people hate American cars. And they hate our ability. First of all, you got to remember, Europeans hate the freedoms that Americans have because they don't have them and they never will. We have so many freedoms. We got like, you know, the freedom to basically drive cars and the government up until recently, you know, couldn't regulate 
uh, certain things about them until they started really cracking down on a global scale against uh, certain things like emissions and noise. You may have heard in the news, there's a story right now about a dude who has a Lamborghini. I think it's a uh, Huracan. And this guy, of course, and I knew this was going to happen. So this guy is driving around in his uh, Huracan or his Lamborghini, whatever it is. He's driving around, downshifting, upshifting, all that shit, trying to make his car loud and pop and snap and crackle and all that, right? So he drives past one of these brand new microphone sensor cameras. And these things are designed specifically to listen for loud noise. And when they see your car, they get your license plate and they send you a ticket in the mail. I don't know exactly how much the ticket was that he got, but I do know that in California, I think it's $1,000 fixed. And you, you have no choice but to get whatever it is fixed. And he wants to try to sue the city and, and say, oh, yeah, well, this is a stock exhaust. It's like, listen, the exhaust may be stock, but you were driving it loud. And that's, uh, see, these, these people don't seem to understand. When the government comes after you for something, they tax you and they regulate the shit out of you. And eventually you can't afford it no more. They ain't going, he's going to pay that. I guarantee he's going to pay that. The only other possibility is they might let them off with a warning or they might say, yeah, well, you need to get new mufflers on your car. Because for all I know, they may check his car and find out that there's some part of that emission system that's supposed to be there that's not there. Like all these dudes who are, oh, yeah, I'm a straight pipe. My Hellcat, I'm going to take off the cats. I'm going to take the cats, the catenated converters. I'm going to take them off. I'm a straight pipe. All of y'all are going to end up getting tickets in the mail. And that'll be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And that's just it. Because I, I saw this coming for the longest. I made I think I made a video about it a long time ago. The governments have decided that they're going to crack down on automobiles. And it's just that simple. Stellantis has no, how should I say, obligation to sell Chrysler or Dodge. If they want, they can liquidate that shit. Both of them. Which is, and I'm pretty sure that's going to happen to Dodge too, because right now Dodge has no products. They have no new products. They're still selling cars that are like 10 years old. These cars are played out. Played out. And um, at this point, I'm believing that they're going to end up liquidating both of those companies. They may try to keep Dodge around, but this whole thing about electric muscle, that's a bunch of bullshit. It's a marketing term that ain't going nowhere. They're not, uh, and under mark my words, they are not bringing back those V8 engines. And when I say those V8 engines, I'm saying that they're not bringing back what you expect them to have had in the future. I thought, oh yeah, well, they're making a Hellifant, and the Hellifant's going to be a thousand horsepower, and I thought that that was going to end up in, a, in the car's production. Nope. We thought that by net shit, you should be able to have like the most power. You'd be, you're supposed to be able to have the power of a damn Bugatti by now. 1,600 horsepower heavies. That shit ain't happening. It's not happening. These European commies have decided that they're going to liquidate these companies. And they're going to hold on to the rights to these actual brands. So that this way, nobody can make anything as desirable as what we are currently watching disappear. It's just like Mercedes and BMW. Take a look at what they've done. They've lowered all the displacement of their engines. They've put forced induction on everything. I remember when you could get a Mercedes S-Class that had a naturally aspirated engine that created like, what was it, like 382 horsepower, close to 400. Then... They started putting turbochargers on everything. Now they re they reduced the displacement, and they put turbochargers on everything. And Lamborghini, for example, they got a brand new what the Temerario. They got that coming out. This shit's got a fucking twin turbo V8. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. You're supposed to be putting a V10 in there, but no. The Europeans have said not. Nah, we're uh, downsizing everything. I believe this is the last generation that you're gonna see. V12 engines. This is the last, this upcoming generation is the last generation you're going to see. Uh, no more naturally aspirated at all. They're not going to be naturally aspirated. Um, these things are going to end up, all this shit is going to be a bunch of twin turbo V8s. And when they decide to come after those, next thing you know, everything is going to be electric. And that's just it. 
and there's nowhere to go. See, what a lot of people forget is you have a right to own a car. You have no right to drive it. Um, there is no right to drive. It's just that simple. Yeah, you can cross country and cross state and everything, but you can do that shit on your feet. There's no right to drive. You have a right to own these vehicles, but the states have a right to tell you, yeah, you're not allowed to drive it. They are going to make it so that none of these companies are making the product that you expected or that you want. And that's what it's going to come down to. And I saw this coming for a long time. Now, all these do, oh, yeah, well, I'm just going to pay off my Hellcat. I'm going to keep my Hellcat. Uh, yeah, good luck, because you have a ninja loan on your Hellcat. You probably owe way more than that fucking thing's worth. So good luck holding on to that car. Your car is going to be very old, and it's going to be beaten down, run down, and there'll be new cars out there, and God forbid you try to race one of these electric cars. You're just going to lose. All you're going to do is you're going to see taillights. It's gonna, you're going to see that Tesla symbol, and it's going to say plaid, and, and you're just going to, that's all you're going to see, just taillights. And not only that, obviously they're cracking down on, you know, street racing and exhibition of speed. So you're not even going to be able to do that. And these takeovers, well, they, they were looking at the cameras. They're going to show up at your door. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, guess what? We're impounding your fucking car. And that's it. So, no, those days, see, they ruined it. We, we had a good thing going. I admit, like, I'm so glad that I was able to own the cars that I owned and I was able to enjoy them and I was able to get out of them before these fuckboys showed up. Now you got these idiots, idiots with these street takeovers and the bridge takeovers and 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 the and the and the constant nonsense and they ruined it for the rest of us they ruined and with, and then there's the car theft i didn't even mention the car theft they ruined it for everybody they fucked it up for everybody they ruined it they wrecked it so that's it so as for uh, these, these YouTubers, oh, yeah, well, maybe there's a possibility. If China, for example, if BYD or Wu Ling or Geely, if any of them were to buy Dodger Chrysler, the only thing they'd be doing it for is to get access to the name. They are not creating V8 engines. It's not happening. They're... On a global platform, you have to understand, these people are looking for profit. Dodge doesn't make right-hand drive cars. Chrysler did. Jeep does. Uh, what else? Uh, Ram, I don't think they make right-hand drive, but I don't think there's anything stopping them from it either. thing about it is with Dodge, they're going to make Dodges... They're going to make it so that they can sell these things in Australia and they can sell these things in America... And uh, chances are you're going to see right-hand drive cars. And the reality is they're looking for profit. They, they are not building something just because it puts a smile on an American's face. And see, that's the, that's the mistake you, you make. When you sell your company or you sell something to communists over in Europe or Asia, once you sell it, they have control. And the reality is they're not interested in putting a smile on Americans' faces. They're not. They're interested in making as much profit off of that name as they can. In this case, however, I think Stellantis is going to drag that company down into the ground. I popped into, uh, what was it, one of these Dodge Chrysler dealerships the other day. The markups are still on all of these cars. I think I made video about it. The markups are still there. Um, and the reality is, it's like, from what I've been hearing, most of these dealers are losing so much money that they have to keep the markups on the cars that they know that you're interested in. Because for the money that they're losing on everything else, they're trying to make up for the losses by overpricing the stuff that they know that you're going to come in there and buy. At this point, though, I can't understand the draw to these played out vehicles these things are old now it's old played out and you're getting you're literally in front of your face you're getting ripped off like i just don't get i can't imagine people who are so anxious to just throw money away and these are the same people who complain about housing prices and how they can't afford a house it's like wait a minute 
You're talking about you can't afford a house, but meanwhile you're paying like close to two thousand dollars on a fucking Hellcat. Or, or BMW Competition Carbon Series or some stupid nonsense like that. It's incredible. But that's what it is. So the bottom line, listen, there, you know, there's some people who are in their fee-fees about this, you know, but the bottom line is I've, I've come to terms, I came to terms with it a long time ago. When I realized I was never going to get what I wanted out of them and I realized that they were trying to downsell me, I was like, no, nah, I'm gone. I'm gone. I, I've never been addicted to anything and i damn sure ain't gonna be addicted to some car badge i said no nah, i'm gonna take my money i'll go i'll go elsewhere and it's just that simple but these guys these guys these stellantis carlos Tavares, you can blame who you want basically i'm blaming all them european commies over there all of them and socialists socialist communists all the same damn thing so Bottom line is, I'm blaming them. I see where this is going. These YouTubers are trying to hold out hope. I guess it's so that they get more views per video or whatever it is. They ain't no hope. This is it. You are watching Gordon Gecko buy an airline and wreck it. That's what you're watching. Now, Bud Fox is going to jump up. Oh, but Gordon, why do you got to do that? Because it's wreckable. Gordon, why why can't you well you why why can't you fix it? Why can't you do something? Uh, because it's wreckable. That's why. And but some people just don't understand that. Carlos Tavares is gonna show you though. Because all everybody talking about how bad a job he's doing, but the dude is still there. So until they get rid of him and Christine Fuel, no, they're still there wrecking it. And it's just that that's it. That's it. This is it. I'm just happy that I was able to, I, I was buying into it before it was cool, before anybody knew much about it. I was buying into it before it was cool. I had it, enjoyed it before the fuck boys came and ruined everything. So I'm, I'm just thankful for that. But it's time to move on. And it's just that simple. So that's your, the, you see this guy right here, Rhodes? During the Rhodes walk and talk portion, he moves around a garage surrounded by company memorabilia. Guess what, Rhodes? All that memorabilia, all that's memories. It's over. It's over. I'm sorry. It's over. It says, I'm here to let people know about the quality Chrysler had in those days. I'm very proud of what this company did, and I don't want to see it go away. Hey, Mr. Rhodes, it's going away. It's over. It was over a long time ago, but now... Now it's really over. It's going electric without see, and this is the sad reality. Without the V8 engine, Dodge is irrelevant. Without the V8 engine, Chrysler is irrelevant. The only thing Chrysler had going for them was the 300 SRT. That was it. They had the uh what was it? That Pacifica minivan. But for the most part, that company as a brand was invisible. Nobody's paying any attention to them. For many vans on the road, with the exception of people buying them, they're invisible. Nobody notices them. Nobody, if the minivan could pass you by. You don't even notice it's there. They're invisible. Invisible. But when you see one of them 300 SRTs, yeah, you notice that. You don't see them no more because they killed them off. And then... They went down quality on the Dodge product, too. So, yeah, you you know, the Dodge product, as far as I'm concerned, these things are old and played out. They're starting to become invisible. Every now and then you might see one. I've been seeing fewer and fewer of them, and I'm guessing it's because the insurance prices, the premiums on these things are sky high. The MSRPs on these things are sky high. And then the price hikes that they've put on these things, this inflation adjustment pricing is sky high. Most of these dudes now, I'm looking around, these dudes who would be, uh, you know, they wish that they could sell drugs and get themselves a Hellcat. These dudes are driving around in Hyundais. These dudes are driving around in Toyotas. These dudes are driving around. Some of them are smart, and they go out and they get, like, an electric car, and they'd be like, yeah, you know what, I, I give up. And um, these dudes are driving around in, like, the most boring fucking cars. That, everything else is boring. That's the problem. That's the problem. Everything else is boring. So, yeah, they, they might buy a Mercedes, but guess what? The Mercedes are boring, too. Even the new E-Class. 
You're paying like $80,000 and getting a four-cylinder. You're paying $90,000 to get a six-cylinder. It's disgusting, you know? So, oh, no, okay, yeah, I'm going to save up my drug money. I'm going to go get a BMW. What do they do? They, they, they got to go buy an old-ass BMW. They buy, I'm, I've been watching these BMWs, man. They buy these old, old 2005, these old-ass BMWs, these old-ass Mercedes. But the funny thing is, as soon as those cars have a man... Uh, a manufacturer issue, a mechanical issue, or technical problem, a computer problem. As soon as they have one of those, all of a sudden, you don't even see them no more. They're taking the bus. $7,000 to fix the air suspension in, like, an S-Class. Uh, the brake jobs on these BMWs, they charge, like, $2,000 for brakes. It's just, it's just sad. So, um, you ain't got that many choices. It's like... You ain't got that many choices. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. But as for this uh, whole idea about Chrysler, nobody, nobody's, nobody's selling. They're not selling that. What does it say? It says, it's no different to what GM has done all around the world. To all the brands they bought that now no longer exists. I think you're supposed to say exist because it would have been present tense. But anyway, at least sell off Chrysler. Maybe not to this guy, but someone they clearly have no plans for the brand's future. Their one model could be sold as a Dodge Caravan, and that's true. Maybe the Chinese will buy it and make it an EV brand a la MG. Okay. Dodge's new model isn't a Dodge. It's an Alfa Romeo. Jeep took a hit because they killed the Cherokee, the Grand Cherokee, without a replacement. Stellantis like FCA and Daimler seems to have no vision for Chrysler or Dodge. You know, it's funny. When I was saying that they were bought by Cerebus and FCA, I forgot about the Daimler-Chrysler merger, which they quickly undid. Uh, let's see. Very long way of saying, up your offer. Okay? Of course they will reject his offer since what Stellantis want, he can't afford. I think you're making mistakes with your verbs. I think you were supposed to say, of course they rejected his offer because what Stellantis wanted, he can't afford. Okay, it's very, it's really a shame. The Chrysler 300, I own four of them, was discontinued. Now, I owned, me personally, I owned three of them. Although it would have been exciting to see a new iteration, instead they put it in the trash bin. Sell it to someone who actually gives a damn. FFS. I think FFS means for fuck's sakes. Like, you gotta be British to read that. For Oh, for fuck's sakes! Okay. Um, this story was by Beverly Braga. Uh, Beverly Braga has enjoyed an eventful career as a Swiss army knife, having held roles as an after-school teacher, film critic, PR manager, transcriber, and video producer, to name a few. She is currently a communications consultant and freelance writer. That is Beverly Braga. So thank you, Beverly Braga, for the story, and we'll take it from here. I thought that you were going to turn Blue Star around, not upside down. You fucking used me. Well, you're walking around blind without a cane, pal. A fool and his money are lucky enough to get together in the first place. But why do you need to wreck this company? Because it's wreckable, all right? I took another look at it and I changed my mind. If these people lose their jobs, they got nowhere to go. My father has worked there for 24 years. I gave him my word. It's all about bucks, kid. Rest is conversation. To be continued.